is a part of Java new line features. Uh, is about uh, the concurrency, JSONs, etc. So, sorry, I suppose I can drop and uh, you can take it ahead from now. Sure. Thank you. Uh, before we start, kind of like concurrency, um, what it mean or uh, the new flow API that has been added or uh, the reactive API that's added. We need to go through the few about uh, basic concepts of what is reactive programming asset. Uh, what are the base features of that? So reactive programming is about uh, based and started on reactive uh, manifesto. This reactive manifesto has been is an open standard uh, implementation or manifestation that has been created manifesto and based on this manifesto that has talks about um, four key features uh, that need to be there before we can call it as a, we can do a reactive uh, programming so what is normally says about is that that it should has like a four factor feature should be there okay one is that it should be able to scale uh, under failure that is mean it should be real and elastic also that it should be masses driven or asynchronous how the data need to be passed between loosely couple isolated uh, components application okay the four is it should be uh, remain responsive i should uh, return the response in a timely manner it should not take more time and it should be resilient so it will stay responsive even if there are like failures or happens right and based on the reactive manifesto there are some uh, implementations are there or libraries or frameworks are being created for example rx java is in the library that you can use with along with java to create reactive programming and akka being the framework that you can also use apart from there is like a actor framework that has been created so those are basically the hello to... yes hello sir your oh. screen is not visible for me okay so let me share my screen Okay. okay. It is now visible now. No, no, sir. Okay, it's coming now. Sir, no, sir. Let's give it a second. Okay. Should be visible by now. Visible now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Let me start from the beginning then. Okay. So as we're going to talk about the flow API or the reactive API added in the Java 9, we need to first talk about the reactive programming. So reactive programming is actually created out of a uh, manifesto that has been created, which is known as reactive manifesto. It was created in 2014. It was created by the individual who wanted to uh, looking for a different kind of a programming model which can uh, take up lots of load into the application it can be also be resilient under the load it can be responsive becoming a quick amount of data it can be asynchronous or support messaging right so based on those features uh, are the basically core core features based on which a library or framework can be numb as it can be a reactive right 
and uh, there are like different implementation are there uh, before Java 9. So we have to use either the different libraries or framework for that because prior to Java 9, there was no reactive framework was being provided. Okay. A reactive API being provided. Those are basically known as ACA is one such framework from Lightbent. It's basically the organization who has created a language called Scala, which can be worked on JPM. Also, there is like a open source library called Rx Java. Okay. And then the project reactor, uh, which has been, you know, you know, initiated by Facebook. Uh, Rx Java is coming from Facebook, project reactor is something like a group of uh, libraries that are there in uh, framework that are there under multiple different languages. And each language has its own uh, quotation. Uh, then that there is like uh, actors uh, that are there. And the actor is philosophy has been implemented in uh, Akka. Okay. So prior to Java 9, we have to use either of this kind of frameworks or library to include reactive API. Uh, so what is a reactive API? Is, um, before that, we need to understand what is reactive programming is. So it need to have like a four key features. One, it should be elastic. So it should be able to scale under load. It should be asynchronous or message driven between component or application. So that means the one component may not be know about the other component. It just can be loosely coupled. Okay. It can be isolated. So the point of failure can be isolated from one to another. Okay. So because there are some buffering or generally mostly we use the messaging system, uh, different kind of queues or broken in between, right? So same kind of a philosophy can be implemented out here. And it should be responsive. It should be able to work uh, within without taking lots of amount of time. So it kind of a, like a very much minimum milliseconds or seconds. It should be able to return the response back. And even if under the load or under error, it should be able to become resilient. It should be response on data. It should not be causing any breakage or failure. So basically, we can say this, this here, the main importance is on the data, right? So how the data are going to be flow between component or application? So basically, data flow kind of a programming that has been, is basically between the system or processes. Also, it has uh, how the reactive system are different from a reactive programming is that Reactive system is basically nothing but an architectural style. How you're going to be, you know, make multiple reactive applications, services, REST APIs, web services, etc. Combine them together in a single uniform system where they are able to react to their surroundings or the different other services. Okay, so the architectural Reactive system is nothing but an architectural style, and reactive programming is the programming that we use to create those services. Now, there is a, like a concept of in the reactive process between one is basically who is creating the data, who is the initiator, another is who is basically consuming the data. Okay. So, in between that, what's going to happen? We can use a buffer kind of a feature in between. So what is the buffer does? It ensure that there is sufficient back pressure. So what is a back pressure? So basically what happened is generally when you have like a, the consumer or producer is talking to each other on a synchronous mode, right? Whatever irrespective of the, you know, whatever the protocol you are using, what happened is that if this initiator is generating those data or the events much more faster than the rate the consumer able to process the consumer is going to be not able to function properly and it bound to be failed right so that in doing that what the consumer should be saying that okay i should not be processing more than this amount of data so i should create a pressure from the 
on the initiator of the data says that I can only process this. This is my speed of data processing. Please don't send more data than me. What is the rate in which I can process? So obviously that data I need to save it somewhere. So I can input a buffer in between so that then I uh, based on that the consumer can you know then casually consume the data or you know handle the data in the rate in which it's currently can process and then the initiator can be you know isolated from the consumer and it can be processed the data in a rate it can able to process so data that is remain unprocessed will be stored in the buffer in between the buffer can be simple a buffer concept or it can be a kind of a message loop uh, or it can be a event loop it can be a kind of a messaging broker or a kind of a event store right so that is where the back pressure it says that the consumer is not going to be overwhelmed and it's going to be pushed back to the initiator or the producer on the data in which the amount of data they are basically sending okay so these are basically key concepts related to reactive programming. There are additional concepts also, what makes a reactive system so we can program into that, but these are the basic concepts. So this reactive programming is now become a part of this standard JDK. Previously, we have to use a kind of a implementation of other third-party library. Instead of that, we have the standard JDK library, which can provide this reactive system or stream that are there right reactive programming that are there so now reactive uh, application right uh, programming is implemented using uh, you can implement that using reactive streams okay what is stream in the java we also have streams right so can anybody explain what is a stream Hello, sir. Yeah. So the question is, what is a stream? String or stream, sir? Stream, stream. So, sir, stream is a collection of objects. In Java. So you can say the stream is basically collections of data, which can be unbounded, unbounded collection of data that can be produced. Okay. That is what is a stream is. The first keyword is it's a unbounded group of data elements, unbounded data element that can be streamed up or it can be produced. Okay. So un unbounded means uh, like unstructured and uh, means no, out of limit. Unbounded means it, there is no limit to it. Okay. okay. So using Java streams, we can process any amount of data which is limitless. Okay. So basically, we say that stream represents a limitless amount of data. Okay. okay. So now, in the reactive stream, also we have a stream of data, and reactive stream gives us a processing pipeline. Processing pipeline is basically created using function composition. What do you mean by function composition? Means that different functions are combined together to process that particular stream of data. So what are they? They are basically, we in a Java stream, we have lots of different functions like filter, map, flat map, then collection, some <laughs> aggregation, et cetera, right? And these are like a intermediary methods or post data being processed. So when you say map, we convert one data type to another data type, right? So basically, these are basically composition of multiple methods to process, creating a processing pipeline. But that particular processing pipeline is not actually activated. It's basically lazy unless until you are calling a termination operation. Termination operation is what? Find any, find match any, right? Find any or find first. It may be for each. It may be a collection, right? Those are basically termination operations. Unless you are calling the termination operation in your program flow, that this particular stream is not initialized. So it's lazily executed. 
I can define a stream, but that particular stream is not going to process any data unless I call it termination operation. Okay. Now, normally in Java stream, what you find there is a only one stream of record, one stream, one channel of record, in which record we just process the data at the end termination phase, right? But in reactive stream, there are basically three channels of data. One is basically a data channel in which is continually getting the data, and we can process the data upon. Another is that when there is like a kind of a, like an exception happens okay so when the exception happens then the corresponding error channel been activated when it is successfully completed then is completion channel be activated okay so what is reactive stream gives you Normally in Java stream, what happens? You have to handle the exception in separate try catch block, right? But in reactive streams, uh, what happens is that you can handle the exception in a downstream data channel in the error channel, okay? And also reactive stream support the concept of forking. Forking means that means normally what happened is in Java stream, you have like a one particular subscriber, one particular end, you know, data processing step, right? Either you can use a for each, which can be a one uh, subscriber, which going to be process the data on each of the element of the data in the stream. But on the reactive streams, you can have multiple subscriber. Okay, so you can have a multiple subscriber, and those subscriber can individually can process the data, or those subscriber can combine in a process the data or use the same data flow that are there in. Okay. Now, also reactive stream do support a back pressure, so that means they can support our case will be they can support that how much the data that particular consumer can take we can use a buffer in between so that we can isolate the consumer sub subscriber from the consumer and we let the subscriber to process the data in its own speed than the amount of data that been produced by the your publisher that is generating the data so in reactive stream all the data processing is mostly hello sir asynchronous yes sir i means i just wanted to ask like uh, sir what we actually uh, like do with this uh, means uh, reactive program like what do we make that is what i wanted yeah. to like so reactive programming is that if you compare with the java stream is basically allow us to process on a stream of data it allows us to process work on a stream of data by data processing pipeline by composing one or many functions. Okay, there may uh, there are like four parts to it. So it allows us to process unbounded stream of data. One part number one, we uh, it can we can allow to process the data in a asynchronous manner. And also, we, what you can do, we can actually isolate the consumer producer, which we can use a buffer so that they can process the data in one speed. The consumer can process the data in one speed, and the uh, producer can be produced the data, publisher can publish the data in his own speed. Okay. So, again, I repeat, it allows us to process unlimited unbounded stream of data, unbounded data in a stream in an asynchronous manner. So here in when you process in the Java, right, Java stream, there is only way you can, you know, parallelize the data, parallelize processing by using parallel stream. But the Java stream itself doesn't give you any kind of asynchronous processing. So that means it's happening on a, on a single thread. Here, when you're talking about asynchronous processing, your consumer can run in a sequence, your producer can be your 
sub publisher can be run on a different thread, right? So those can be run on a separate threads. So basically, their communication between them is totally asynchronous. And as they are asynchronous, so there can be work on a different threads and they can be work on a different speed of processing. And to isolate the piece of processing, we can also take a support of a back pressure. Okay. So any other question on reactive streams? No, sir. Right now. Okay. Now, what are the basic key interfaces there in a reactive APIs? Okay. So in reactive APIs, we have four different interfaces, right? One is the publisher. Publisher is who produces the data. It can produce unbounded amount of data. Okay. So that means the publisher, which is producing the data. That's one part. Then there is a subscriber. Subscriber being who is actually consuming the data. Okay, subscriber here is the who is the consumer of the data who has received the data from your publisher. Okay, subscription we can say is a connection or session between a consumer and a producer, or we can say it's between a publisher and a subscriber. Subscription we can thought of a connection or a session between them. Okay, that is a subscription. Now processor which is can be a component that process the incoming data. So that means it can be a consumer to a publisher, upstream publisher, okay? And it can, after consumer, it can maybe transforming the data from one data type to another data type or performing some business logic. And then after this, that is basically publishing the new data after transformation or after data processing, that is, then it becomes a publisher to downstream consumer. So it means publisher, processor, and subscriber. For a processor, it can be a subscriber to the previous publisher, and the downstream subscriber, it can become a processor is become a publisher. So that means it's a both, which basically perform the operation on the publisher. Okay. So any question on the four interfaces on reactive API? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. Now in the back pressure, when you're talking about back pressure, it is being implemented using a buffer, okay? And they're like different buffer means what? It's basically stores the data that have been unprocessed or that have been produced by the publisher, but not yet consumed by the consumer. So within the buffer, within the memory, this data resides, okay? So it means able to isolate the publisher and the subscriber and it is reduced the data loss. Now there are different data uh, buffer strategies are available with RX Java. Some are drop, some are latest, some are error, some are buffer. Okay. So let's see first some RX Java example. Then we're going to come about the flow API. So flow under flow API in Java 9, what we have is we have this four sub interfaces that are there okay yeah, you know so this here basic example of rx java so before we can use the rx java what you need to do is we need to include the uh, reactive ex and underneath that we have to include the rx java library which is 
r is over 3 and we can include the latest version which is 3.1.3 so that you have to mention in your dependency management that is under maven Okay. I cannot hear you, sir. Hello. Okay. Let me repeat. So before we can use any kind of reactive library, either of third party library, or even if we use the reactive library on the Java side, right? The standard Java library under flow API, we need to include an implementation library into our class path okay so here i'm using rx java library that implement the reactive streams apis this is uh, one of the implementation of reactive programming and i'm including this into the form.xml so i'm just including io reactive ex extension that is RS Java 3 and RS Java 3.1.3. Okay. So this library you can use, or you can use the other libraries for your example. So I'm just using an example of RS Java. So in RS Java, what you're doing is we're going to be um, first required what? We, we wanted to see the four pieces of it, right? We want to see the publisher, we want to see the subscriber, we want to see the processor, and we want to see the we may not going to see the subscription, but it is the connection between the publisher and the subscriber. So we want to generate some data. So we are using the uh, here flowable. Okay, that's kind of like a utility class on RX Java. So here we're going to be producing the Java, producing the data after one second interval okay after initial one second interval and then with a period interval of one second in between we're going to be producing the data that means we are publishing the data here so this line is basically after interval it's going to be creating the records okay now what can i do uh, so i can first see a basic example I'm going to be, you know, produce the data. Okay, so I have a publisher. Now I call the subscribe method. Within a subscribe method, say, I'm going to be simply pin the value into a logger. Okay. Now I have uh, paused the main thread for 10 seconds. And then I'm expecting there will be like uh, 10 value that will be printed out. Okay. Any question with the source code? So this flowable is a, a class, right? Flowable dot interval. So flowable is a class. It is coming from RX Java library. Okay. For reactive programming. And it is coming under the, in, for each one second interval, it will basically producing a new value that is a type of long okay so here this line is creating my first publisher so i am creating the data i can publish the data but if nobody is consuming the data or subscribe to the data there is no use right so i have simply written a basic subscriber which is just going to capture the data listening to the subscription by the subscription it will connect with the publisher and then as a subscriber with this uh, lambda expression which is going to be getting the value from the publisher and basically it's going to print out the value so this is my subscriber okay So this is my subscriber so is this clear first part 
and how we are basically uh, sleeping the main method we basically using thread dot sleep as we know thread dot sleep is those and interrupted exception that we are catching we are just returning a value true false but it is not much of a use but this is like a connection between a publisher and a subscriber so this is just running it so it's going to be continuously run, running and creating the data so it's basically unbounded so have i not given any uh i just only given any sleep so that my main program get hit get pause and i can see the output so it will continuously with an interval of one second it's going to produce the data and it's printed out up to zero to nine the thin values it has able to produce and i'm able to listen to that particular data using a subscriber and i just simply print it out okay now what i can do as a part of this say i'm going to doing some third interface or third implementation or component I wanted to see is the processor. Okay. One simple example of a processor is that that it is like a map. Okay. What is this map is doing is basically taking the value and it's multiplying by two. Okay. So what is the processor as we know it's basically a subscriber for the just the above publisher and it is a basically publisher to below subscriber so this this map is acting as a subscriber to this publisher which is basically interval based publisher and then it also been used in a subscribe method down below so that means it's a producer of values to this subscribe method so is this clear so far? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So now we're going to run. What are you going to see? I'm going to see the values are multiplied by two. And we're going to again see the 10 values that are there. So, so far so good, but now I can, you know, make this uh, value to call method after already written, that is transforming. In this transform, I can, you know, call the method and same way I just get the values, whatever is there, it's been printed out. So far, so good. Now, what I'm going to do next is that not always I'm going to find a value that will be, you know, or any kind of operation that I'm doing may result in an exception. For example, in this publisher, right, what I can do, I can, you know, make a call to an API from where I'm going to getting the value. And after in the map, I'm going to transform the response object into a normal Java object and then into the subscriber, I'm going to pass this value to another function to or do some certain kind of operation. So may so happen is that there are some exception may occurs, right? So here I am just giving the value. If the values uh, is that is generated is equal to five, I'm going to simply throw an runtime exception. Okay, otherwise I just going to be simply going to be having a value that is star two. Now here I'm not handle any kind of exception. I'm simply going to printing out. So now if I just run this, the first, second, third, fourth, fifth value have been there. So when the fifth value is being produced, when the value is actually fifth, it's starting from zero. So it's basically six value. So after five value is properly created, on the sixth value, there is an exception throws out. So what it says, then 
error not no error not implemented exception so there is no exception handling block is for me that is the on error right so that is been thrown from rx java that you have only have consumed but what is the root cause of exception is that you have this as having runtime exception okay so what can i now do i can change my subscriber and now of the subscriber what i can do i can enable the lambda functions that are required like this so what you can see this subscriber method has in basically three part one part is basically on next that when the next value is produced what is going to do here one simply print it out so when on next that is one then there is num come as a on error if there is any error happen what happen then so that means that's my on header is basically giving me to me the exception of toable object which may inside that having that runtime operation so then i can on error method i can handle the particular exception so and then on complete then when is my unbounded data generation is been completed then i going to see on complete right so how can i uh, you know having the data been created on complete so just i'm going to running this method for now so now i am having like a exception handling method or on error implementation so when i am having the on error implementation so i am expecting there should be some error message that going to simply going to i print it out okay so i going to print out the error message okay there is no my program is not broken because i handled the particular error that is there i can you know, change this to log dot error So now from the three data channel, like I have seen that one channel, the data is coming. Another channel, if there is any exception happens, that been coming. So out here in the, the subscriber, what I am finding first is on next. So this is my data channel. Okay, the first channel on error this is my error channel if there is any exception occurs and then there is like third on complete this is my when the all the data generation that has been complete or this is my complete channel now but our stream is somehow been unbounded so i can bound my stream to filter like how many how much record i can that uh, how much record i going to be generating right so here i can giving my filter so it is like a unbounded data that been generated on every second so i can say okay i am generating the values okay when i'm generating the value i can say i going to show the some first three values right so i can say the value is uh, or maybe i can say the value is say greater than 4 so that means it want to only find the first three value after first three value are going to get is the it is going to be completed because there is no more value that the particular uh, publisher can produce so that is the on completion so it is getting completed so here my sorry here my runtime exception happens so when my runtime exception happen exception in transform the value so okay so that means it has actually you know gone in and based on the filter it's gone into four so if i just reduce this to two let's see what happens 
instead of saying the value greater than two okay so I'll say value is greater than two so here i can see the value six then eight then the error is coming out so that means here what happened is when i skip the first two values right here i skip the first two values then the error has happened okay now what if i don't throw up any further error right will the particular incomplete become available see i have committed out the error so there is no error that is there either your error going to be come up or your completion going to be ended up. but here is not uh, completing that value because there is no complete is as such is there because we are only stopping the state but yeah but the values i can filter it out but there is i have not seen that there is any done is because this is kind of a unended list of values right have i created a list with a limited list then then i'm going to see the done being implemented okay so let's sir, see. what kind of values is generated sir like uh, here, here when i using flowable interval there's long value being generated starting from zero zero yes Oops. okay and on every one second it is incremented by one okay okay yes now let's see another example where you can see the concept of back patient okay so here i'm um, what i'm using is right uh, so here i'm using a flowable i'm creating another i'm using now a create method right so in create method there is like a emit method emitter this is being my publisher method which is going to be providing the data okay is basically you know providing the data so here what i'm uh, sending here we am sending here an emitter object pro emitable here i'm going to be you know process the data and here i'm going to be you know sending the data out but here i'm going to be using a two different so this is my uh, first let me explain what is what so this is my publisher which is going to emit the result so it's going to say emit on next that is on next which is my subscriber going to be listened to okay okay and then what i'm doing is i'm going to be saving this create into a feed okay and then on the feed, I'm going to be listening or subscribing to the data. So that means I'm subscribing to the data. I'm simply printing this out. Now, what is the back pressure is, is basically isolates between the publisher and the consumer. So when you say publisher and consumer is isolate, what is doing out here is here the data value is being created every half a second that is 500 millisecond so here we can see our publisher is 500 millisecond rate it's going to creating the data then when it says the processing the data say it is with a slow processor it is process the data in every one second it cannot process the data more than one second okay fine so in that case what happened is now i'm going to have a kind of a slow subscriber and a fast post publishing right now for the back pressure what i'm going to do i'm going to be using a buffer so that whatever data being created they could be stored into that particular memory or buffer in between now what i say that i'm going to be observed on this particular feed 
okay here the schedule is schedulers i'm using here it will be wait on the computation it will also throw a delay error if there is an error that is there okay and then also it's going to have a buffer size of two that means two values will be stored in the buffer and if the buffer the, there will be the two values will be stored there and in between the processor need to be able to process the value okay and here we again going to be sleeping for 10 seconds so this program will work on a 10 seconds so we have like a two sir, yes sir like why do you need to sleep means use this sleep statement okay so if i remove the same sleep statement right so this is like if uh, this application is working in a main thread right mm. okay so i've removed the sleep statement and then let's see what happens okay but here I can use without the sleep statement as well okay because what i doing on the publisher side right i am having a limited value that i can create so here i have like a int count i'm starting with zero and here i'm choosing to uh, go up to the value of 10. so zero to nine i'm going so i'm going to be creating the value up to in nine nine and then whatever value is generated i'm going to using the emitter to publish the data to the next on next so on next channel or the data channel the value will be published now okay now here i'm going to be going into a sleep so i'm coming back where i'm using the sleep so main method it is not necessary to use the sleep but let's see what is the outcome that is shown here so here my emitter or the publisher is produce the first value so okay fine then my you know the consumer is able to consume the value that is zero fine then the emitter go ahead and then here two more values but as this so i'm using sleep to here to simulate that there is some computational time that is going on it may be a db access it may be a network call right so sleep is only representing the computational time that is taking to consume the data after the, or producing the data how much time it going to take to next time it's going to produce the data okay here i'm using the fixed delay using sleep i'm using just just fixed delay sleep is what sleep is nothing but a method that is uh, calling the state of sleep right so in that case what happening is is basically storing the data uh, it's generating the data with that particular interval so what is happening it's emitting further two more records and then without the buffer what happened it's going to lose the buffer it's not going to lose the data so then it's going to able to get the second in the meantime it's the consumer go ahead and produce a few more data across so it's going to print the data values three and two so when you're going to be ending our application we see that our consume emitter has been able to produce the nine data but our consumer is only able to process the five data and my application is actually ended out here okay fine so basically your consumer is not able to get all the records and then it is abruptly got ended. Okay. So after I added sleep, what I can able to see that my application is allowing the subscriber to process the record. Because your publisher is able to provide the data, and it after it provide the data, its work has been done, because it can only provide a finite amount of data for now. 
using streams or any reactive stream, you can either provide finite or infinite type of a data, unbounded list of data, but it's, uh, we have given a limit, so it's only providing the zero to nine, 10 values. So after it provided the last value, it works has been completed. But still, your as your consumer or your subscriber is slow, is only able to process four records. Okay, so as if able to process only four records, what happen is the remaining record are not he not able to process in the first pass. Now I have given him a sleep, so I have paused the main thread, so that gives you the subscriber sufficient time so it can able to produce the rest of the records from the buffer and it's able to produce process that okay that's why you given the slip okay yes, sir, but like yeah. th these values like from six to nine all mm -hmm. these values will be uh, like printed in the second thread like now it's printing but like if i have another program Mm -hmm. another thread from from there this, this like this is also like uh, getting late no yeah like from to this, is, this is this has been uh, you know working in a separate thread right but you can see like it is coming on the thread pool you can see yeah, the thread name is there yes okay First thread. fine but your emitter is actually working on the main thread you can see okay. the main thread, right? So you subscribe on a different thread, but your main thread get paused. Then what happened? Okay. Your main application get ended. Then all other thread is not going to be working, right? Yes, sir. That's why we are missing the rest of the records. Okay. But I have paused the main thread, so now the subscriber get a time to catch up with the remaining values. Okay. Okay. Now, so that means, so, so like how much sleep time we have to give? How like how will you take a sample example? Okay. Okay. It's just a sample example showing that, right? Normally, when you're going to do the application, we can run the, your our emitter in a separate way and separate thread or our subscriber in a separate thread. Okay. Now the backup strategy. Let's see the one is the backup strategy is that we are using the buffer, right? Buffer to store the data. So that means there's no data has been lost. Now there are different other strategies are also there. Okay. So one more strategy I can take is a drop. Okay, let's run the example with the drop. What is drop does is basically drop out the values which the consumer is not able to process. Okay. okay. Now, if I can look into the particular code, result output. So it's zero zero. It's initiated, started, but this taking more time one second and in between in half a second it produces the value then when it comes back it gets one in between what it does it is able to produce the value up to four okay so here the remaining two values it actually drop out drop or discard it so it gets the value that is four then it get five five then it is six seven eight then get the eight, then have a nine, then you get the nine. Okay. Now, if I can increase the upper size, will that impact anything? So depending on the buffer type, right? So it's going to be, you know, storing the values, okay? And whatever values it, the particular, uh, you know, he, the, he calls, right? 
so after 6 so basically on next so 0 on next it gets 0 so when it calls the uh, on next it able to get the 1 then when it calls the next it able to get the 2 okay next time he make a call next it able to get with the value 3 but when you come back to the call value 6 right why is getting the value 6 okay because when you get the value 6 the remaining value from the buffer has been dropped dropped so it's dropped yes whatever above the value that is dropped okay now it's called 7 it get the 7 when you call the 8 it get the 8 correct so in the buffer i have the value what is the your method you have called at that time what value is there speaking at that time what value that is generated you get that particular value and rest of the values get dropped so one two i get one then i get the next call i get the two then i get a mix call i get the three okay. so like why do you need to drop like you are if i say for example the scenario say uh you wanted to know what is that you know latest value you are interested in or what is the current value you are interested in right rest of the values you are not interested so for example say simple an iot example let's take that say you wanted to know what is the current uh, temperature in a particular room right so in your home system you have a particular thermostat smart thermostat which is connected to the web and that is emitting the values right now it emitting the value every say five seconds or six seconds correct now when you're processing the particular value in that case what you want you wanted to know what is the current value that you are interested in you are not interested in what is the you know value that is there in the five, five seconds six seven or seven seconds maybe in your uh, you know dashboard or in your mobile laptop you can refresh the value on every 10 seconds okay so at the 10 second you wanted to know what is the latest value that is there and you wanted to drop the rest of the values that are there correct so in that case i don't need to read all the values but previously when i'm using the buffer i'm ensuring i'm reading the all the values correct but in case of iot it may be only important the what is the current value of the thermostat that is there but for example uh, when you are processing a financial application all the transaction value is important because by processing all the transaction values you can only enable to reach the what is the user's current account balance right so you cannot drop that down it's based on your scenario as you're processing unbounded list of values you can react to it and you can create the back pressure and you can only take out the value so that means you don't need to process at that particular moment all the values you can process in a later time and when you're processing on the later time you can decide like which value we want to process okay sir sir what is that buffer size like you giving for it can be increased Huh. it can be increased depending on how much buffer size you wanted to keep right so how many elements you want to store inside the values so four means i did not escape it is the four values it can store in the buffer right buffer okay. size how much value you can store right store, okay the okay. particular okay. So let us take another example. Now this being uh, all the different uh, is the another thing is that we can have like multiple subscribers, right? So multiple subscriber, what you have in a multiple subscriber is here again, I'm producing the value, long value starting from zero on every one second with the initial delay of one second, okay? And I'm creating a feed of long values that are there, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be having a subscriber. So I'm naming this as a subscriber one. So always we know the subscriber runs in a different thread, apart from the main thread. So after this 
subscriber is able to process some values i am able to put him a sleep okay so our main thread get paused and within the 5 second whatever value it came to process now my stream is able to uh, create the values right now the next subscriber comes in and it is going to start processing the values right now these two subscribers are kind of a different subscriber so that means i can be able to generate the same values but each subscriber is going to be processing this so first subscriber now is able to process the value one to five okay now the second subscriber joining and the second subscriber can continuously process the value right but it's going to be process the value from zeroth location okay that means two subscriber can listen to the same data stream and they can process they can join in same time later time or whatever amount of time so that means what you can do with this kind of pattern you can have one stream of data one source of data but you can have a multiple sync of data multiple subscriber and those subscriber can process the data in a different manner and both subscriber are using a different thread pool this is two this is one correct and they are processed independently they can process the data separately because there may be a use case when i need to process the same data in a different way okay one set of data i may be used for aggregation another set of data i may be used to store in a deep database right now now if i want this is subscriber to share the state or they going to be uh, picking up that particular set of data then i call the share method So in case of share method, what happens is when the latest subscriber joins, they actually not going to start the process that are from the very first record. They go to process the data from the particular position, the latest value that has been consumed. So when that particular second subscriber joins, it actually not process from the zeroth location, it actually process from the fifth location. And then they continuously process from the same values that they can see. Okay, so that's your example of multiple subscribers. This is this is concurrency, right? This means multiple subscriber because yeah, multiple it, subscriber works in a parallel. All the subscriber works in a parallel thread, right? Okay. Yes. Okay. So, but the difference between the share and non-share mode is that each subscriber is going to be when it is normal, not shared, I mean not call the share method, they can be initiated using the value 0, 1, 2, and then the next subscriber card, it can again start listening from the very beginning of the particular data stream. But when you call the share, they basically when the later on the subscriber joins, they basically listen from the same value type. Uh, same value position so if the first subscriber is reached to five the next one is also going to be reading for five i can also add the another subscriber also that will be listened in after two seconds then they're going to pick up the next latest value and then from the latest value it basically start processing that okay sir in uh, in that example uh, that in run option the subscriber two is in trade one yeah so basically they're going to see the same value but they are in a separate thread they are always in a separate thread when i run this this program also they are into in a separate state previously they were in a separate thread but here they are in a part of the same thread okay so yes okay in the same thread so obviously they are going to be sharing the same state. Okay. But when I'm not all the separate thing, so now what happens is I can spawn any number of different different subscribers, but they're going to be using the same thread that is there. And when that particular thread get ended, all the subscriber get completed. 
But if I don't call the shear method, what happens is each subscriber will be possessed in its own separate head. So like we are doing this to decrease the waiting time, that's why. No, no, decreasing the waiting time is separate. That is under back pressure. Okay. So I think okay. we need to pause here. I have to join another call. So what is the remaining part is the compatible future? Um, and the, what is the new thing is added into the compatible uh, future, right? So we may have a, like a total uh, feature of Java 8 and 9 combined, and we can look into that. OK? OK, sir. OK. okay. okay. Let us pause the date. And we're going to be again starting with computable future uh, method that has been added. And then also we're going to have a first recap of what is the computable future is, future and computable stage, and then uh, new method or APIs. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, pause for the coffee here. Okay, let me end the call here. Thank you, guys.